is he doing? He's beginning to believe. Hey guys and welcome back. I just want to say that I was quite skeptical when first buying this game, mainly because I had my own personal stigma against the game. Because you cannot tell me that this is not Fortnite VR. And at first glance this is true, we got bootleg chug jug, kids cranking 90s, uh, cranking 90s time, it's, it's time, it's time to crank some 90s, egg. cosmetic skins, and it's free to play. Well, at least for Oculus. But there is one thing, one crucial detail about this game that separates it far and above other VR shooters. And that simple thing? The ability to go wherever you want, whenever you want, however you want. The movement in this game not only makes it one of the most fun VR shooters I have ever played, but it honestly creates a skill ceiling so goddamn high I can't see the top of it. You would be a fool to think that this game is merely curated towards children. It's deceptive with its cartoonish-like aesthetics and relatively simple gunplay. But underneath this childish guise lies a leviathan waiting under the waters. And there's many reasons for this, but I'll break it down into some smaller parts, that way we can get a full picture of what's actually going on in this game. First and foremost, the biggest thing is the movement. With the ability to literally climb anything, hang off anything, and fly anywhere you damn well please, it creates a lot of creative options. This is something that I don't think I've seen replicated in another VR shooter, at least well. The only other game that I can think that has moderate levels of movement freedom is Breachers, but that's like comparing apples and oranges. Most shooters like Pavlov, Onward, Contractors, Breachers, you're gonna be spending a lot of time just walking around. Where walking around in Population 1 is usually a death sentence. A lot of the time you're gonna be spending this game climbing, you're gonna be flying around, dipping and diving out of hard cover, but the last thing you're going to be doing is generally walking, especially when it comes down to a fight, which is usually about speed and aggression. If you're playing games like Onwards, Breachers, or Pavlov, typically you're wanting to hold a lot of corners and securing areas. In Population 1 though, no area is technically and truly safe. The whole area is the battlefield, and you're only limited by your creativity and your ability to use the environment around you. Which makes Population 1 Combat actually one of the best that I've ever played, because it's almost more based upon your imagination than it is your skill, although you're definitely still gonna need to hit your shots. Going into a fight, you have pretty much unlimited potential to take it however you want. You want to go straight in? You can do that. You want to go off to the side and fly from some high ground to try and pick them off? You can do that. And what's great, no matter your playstyle, whether that be you up on the front lines outmaneuvering the enemies, or just sitting in the back with an op picking them off, there's a weapon to match your playstyle. You have a 5 blend melody to choose from. You have your pistols, your shotguns, your assault rifles, snipers, and your util. And all these categories have various weapons inside of them, and they don't behave the same. Quickly, you're going to figure out what works for you and what matches your playstyle best. Really, the combat is top-notch. Even though it's nowhere near as realistic as, say, Pavlov or Into the Radius, it has this certain arcadey feel that matches the game very well. And honestly, that type of reloading and gun physics would truly bog down the game and take away from the fast-paced combat and decision-making. Because the game is just as much about reading the battlefield as well as fighting in it, you have a lot of decisions to be making, and sometimes you have to make those decisions in a split second. Are you going to push the enemy, pull back, do you build in front of you, do you have time to get this reload off, is this the best position, is that footsteps I hear behind me? There's a lot of things that go on inside combat that you need to pay attention to. Do you have time to get this heal off? Do you have time to res your buddy? Do you push into the enemy because you hear them rezzing? Or are they fake rezzing and they're going to turn around and shoot you the second you pop your head out? There's a lot of things that are happening in this game that make it so much fun. But honestly, the greatest thing that's hidden and probably misunderstood in this game is its skill ceiling. It's always fun to master the AK and Pavlov and be able to one-tap people from across the map, or the Vezin and Breachers to do the same. 
but honestly, to become a truly great player in those games requires just muscle memory usually, and obviously the ability to listen and just general map knowledge. But I would have to say to be truly good at Population 1, you need to be thinking at a savant level. You need to be able to create and execute plans on the fly. The battlefield is infinitely dynamic, which means it has infinite possibilities. Which means you also have to have the lightning reflexes to respond to any random amount of things that could happen during a fight. That level of quick thinking and creativity is generally not needed for most shooters. But if you want to be good at Population 1, not only do you have to master shooting and movement and map knowledge, you're going to need to master building and teamwork and just generally having good instincts. Because there will be times when shit goes so awry and a match happened in a way that you cannot predict that you're gonna have to fly off instinct. And your team winning or losing may come down to your ability to think, not just simply execute. Overall though, I think Population 1 is really special. It's definitely a much more involved shooter than at first glance. Of course, you can always just simply play for fun with your buddies, but if you ever wanted a game where you truly wanted to test the skill ceiling, this is it. The game is free for Oculus players, so there's no reason why you shouldn't have it. For the rest of us though, if you've been looking for a shooter that you can truly evolve in, I would highly recommend this. But hey guys, I've been rambling on long enough. Take care, and I'll see you later.